The One Obsession campaign is a big part of Oakley's recent history. It's the idea that many of us, most of us, have an obsession with our chosen sport, but many of us have also got an obsession with Oakley's. And one person who definitely ticks that box is Brian Takumi. Now he's worked here for 21 years. He's the VP of Brand Creative and he literally wrote the book on Oakley. And he is gonna take us through his top seven coolest, favorite, most important Oakley's of all time. Right, so I'm looking forward to this. We get to geek out on sunglasses. In front of us, we've got a selection of what you think are either the most important or your favorite Oakley glasses of all time. Where are we gonna start? I think, you know, first thing we'll start with, uh, we have to start with the beginning of Oakley and sunglasses, and that's the eye shade. I think definitely without this, you wouldn't have Oakley as it exists today, because it really put us down the path of starting out with eyewear. So, you know, obviously it's a very sports specific piece and a very niche piece. At the same time, it's what kind of helped put us on our path to making what we are today with eyewear. I think the next thing as you look at uh, is obviously one of the next steps in that, which was razor blade. Yeah. Because I think while this was the piece that helped create Oakley, Razor Blades was probably the piece that really defined it to becoming, leaving that niche world of just cycling and snow sports and things like that, and really going into this blend of sport performance could become lifestyle eyewear that you could wear every day. So when you look at the Razor Blade that it transcended, not just being used in sport, but could be worn as an everyday piece. And certainly over the years, this shape, the shape of the lens, the iconic ear stem certainly became a mainstay of helping define sports eyewear. Yeah, and I mean, because they were used, you know, in sport. Greg LeMond, you know, wore a pair to win the Tour de France, didn't he, in 89? Yep. Yep. So, and then equally now, was it Pharrell Williams had a nice diamond encrusted pair Pharrell recently? Pharrell Williams has a nice diamond encrusted pair, a solid gold pair that solid he had a jeweler made. So it's definitely found its place in pop culture. Uh, world history and present day. So yeah. certainly that is a defining moment. And for... the, the, the customization on the razor blades, you know, that obviously wasn't available on the eye shades, but the range of color and options, the style of it, was that different between these two generations? Yeah, I think there was definitely, you know, Jim saw the opportunity here with the uh, removable and adjustable ear stems, um, something they had, he had on there. And then as they were uh, continued working on razor blades, not that it had the adjustable ear stems, but certainly the fact that he became, was able to create the earpiece kit that he was able to sell and sell it in multiple colors and basically that you could customize them yourself. So yeah. um, certainly was the first step of seeing customization come to life. And I think that's why, you know, razor blades were actually to become an iconic thing too, because it allowed not just the performance that you could do in it, but also the personal expression of being able to pick and choose your colors and shapes and yeah. things like that, so. All right then, what are we moving on to next? The third most important pair. I think, you know, just going down the timeline, it probably starts with Mumbo M-Frame, just because really this was the dawning of that uh, optically correct, the uh, toric shape, which was more the shape of a sphere versus the cylindrical shape here. So, you know, also it was the starting of really to think about the different lens shapes. So um, this was a very square shape back in the day of what we were doing. And then to start to think about how do you really make this fit someone's face? And so, you know, one of the things Jim always liked three, this idea about three point fit, which helped define the shape of this where the hooked ear stems went away, we went to the straight ear stems, uh, and that was really something about really creating this idea that it wouldn't hang off your face, that as it would sit back here, it would sit these two points right here and on your nose, and it had this idea of about three-point fit, which is also why when you look at these ear stems, they have the hammer ear stem, had the, the trigger had the shape go this way. Yeah. Whereas when you look at a M frame, you'll see that the ear stem comes out and goes back. And that was really to create this idea of fit going right here and holding onto your head versus hanging off your face. Okay, so where, where are we going next then? From, from our M frame to... The next one for me is probably, um, didn't have a huge mainstream uh, 
place in history, but it definitely had something in helping drive where we are today. And it was actually, um, obviously for the cycling world, you guys are very aware of Racing Jacket. Yeah. But it was this one we did for Atmos as a collab in Australia, or in Japan. And the thing with it was, is this actually glows in the dark. All this color, the Celeste color, the ear socks, yeah. the uh, Celeste paint glows in the dark. And really, obviously at that time, you're talking about, I wanna say, to early 2000 or 2010-ish around there when we were doing that or late 2000s. Obviously trying to do something like this on a piece of eyewear was not easy. Yeah. <laughs> and so a lot of detail went into this too of, you know, these had to be hand splattered on top of that, making sure the glow in the dark paint didn't rub off. At the same time, the detail that we put in of having the little A actually stamped onto the bolts there. Nice. This was really, I think, you know, really helped us set the tone for how we would push the boundaries in Deco again and start really putting some stuff that was interesting out there in the world and take it to a whole new level. Yeah, so. it's quite an iconic shape, I guess, as well now, given that Garrett Thomas is single-handedly still, still flying still the flag. Wear, still wears it to yeah. this day, so. Um, you are you know, tempted definitely. to do a custom pair for him this year? Uh, it goes back and forth, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, you, you guys are cyclists, so you know, it's hard to, you know, sometimes as much as we look to progress the shape, put new technology in. You know, for some guys, it's hard to break away with what they're comfortable with after yeah. so many years of wearing it. So, you know, we look at ways of how can we uh, leverage the fact that he's still wearing racing jacket and think of ways like, okay, well, um, instead of just using all the existing line, is there opportunity to do stuff with them or do something yeah. that's special for him? Or how do we breathe new life into racing jacket? What's the opportunity there? So, yeah. Okay, cool. Right, so from, a super limited edition collaboration then. Where are we heading next? So I think, as I said, this really set the tone for Deco. And I think, you know, this was very limited in its scale and visibility because it was done as a limited edition for Japan. I think one thing that really holds a special place in my heart is what we just did at the uh, Olympics in Korea. And that was with the Harmony Fade. And so we've always tried to have uh, colors for our athletes at the uh, any of the Olympic games, whether that was summer or winter. Uh, a couple winter games, we did the green. At Rio, we had this green fade. But I think, you know, this, this was really special to me. While my team has always worked on these, I think this holds a special place in my heart because I actually really did work on it myself. So uh, this is actually the original uh, hand-painted prototype of what we wanted to do, which yeah. is very this 50-50 yin and yang type look. Um, that painted in my garage, just the concept uh, piece that was done to think about what we could do for Olympics. It'd be a cool country flag as well, wouldn't it? The Harmony flag. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think that would be, uh, yeah. Become our flag. Yeah, oh, yeah. there you okay. go. Uh, okay, right then. So we've gone from limited edition colorways. So the next piece that I think, you know, for me, helped in shaping where the brand can go was really this idea about Frogskin's light. I think, you know, I think at times, what you look at here, that performance eyewear has to look performance. Yeah. And I think um, as you talk about different cyclists now, especially you know you guys being from that world, you know that all cyclists are not elite guys who are racing in the Tour de France, and they're not all carbon fiber frame guys. There's a huge breadth of guys yeah. that are out there, and you know guys ride carbon fiber bikes, guys ride aluminum, guys ride steel. Some people are using it, yes, to do big coffee rides or things like that. Some people are riding just to go to the local market. And so when you talk about, or just to get to work and commute. So when you talk about what can Oakley be in that, it shouldn't be, if I'm gonna do cycling, I have to wear something that looks like I'm racing in the Tour de France. It could be like, well, yeah, I ride a bike, but there's times I just wanna go. I want some of these performance features, but I don't need to look like I'm racing. Cool. Right, so there's one pair left then, these ones, which are not gonna be familiar, I think, to many of our viewers. Yeah, yes. you know, the silhouette there, very sim similar to what you would see in an M-frame or a radar, but those are actually, you know, one of our military glasses. And I think, you know, while the military thing at times can be a very touchy subject, at the same time, it's very meaningful as a brand. And you think about, you know, as an eyewear company, what does eyewear mean? And I think I had the personal opportunity to find that out because uh, 
One time we had visited a hospital here in the States that had been dealing, had deals with a lot of this, our soldiers who come back from overseas who've suffered some type of amputation. And so one of the things was we went to visit them and we went into this soldier's uh, room and he had lost both of his arms in an IED explosion. And we went in there, he knew we were from Oakley and he said, um, thank you for what you guys do. And you know, you're sitting here talking to this guy who sacrificed both his limbs. And I said, well, you know, thank you for what you did. And so the next thing really probably hugely changed my perspective on what we do. But he said, you know, I don't, I don't think you understand what you guys do. He's like, I lost both my arms and they can, they're going to give me new arms. But if I didn't have my Oakleys on, I would have lost my eyesight and I would have never seen my baby daughter again. And you think how powerful that is of, we literally could change someone's life with a pair of eyewear. And we think about, you know, what we do is like, oh, do I look cool in this color or things like that? And those things that go on. But literally, you know, of all the things that go, that you can be have replaced on your body now, the eye vision is still the one thing yeah. you cannot replace. <laughs> and so when you think about, you know, we hear things like, oh, this shape's not cool or this shape's cool or I look cooler in these. You could literally change someone's life. And especially yeah. in a world like cycling, where it's like, you know, we think about sunglasses as sun protection from when the sun's out or can I see the road? We don't think about like how many, you know, how many people ride at night or, you know, you start a ride before the sunset or you're finishing your ride after sun or you start a ride before sunrise and you uh, end a ride after sunset and you think like, oh, the sun's not out. Let me take my glasses off. But you think about like, wow, what if a rock got kicked up in yeah. the dark and you can't, you can't see that rock in the road now. It's even harder to see when there's no light up and how easily a rock, whether that's you riding by yourself or a car driving by, or you're in a group of five guys and someone kicks up a rock, that could literally change your life. Yeah. So it's a story that's not told very often actually in relation to, to eyewear when cycling. Now, you know, like, like you say, it's easy to get obsessed with uh, the performance of the glasses themselves or, you know, the style of them, but actually the fact that we wear them should be wearing them in the first place to protect eyes. Yeah. Is, uh, and that's yeah. something always Jim always talked about was, you know, there's some ads that we have up here that don't talk about, we don't make sunglasses, we make eye protection. Yeah. And, and really getting behind that. And like, that's why, you know, some of the stuff you guys see with all the impact tests and things like that, you know, we may sit and go, well, no one's ever going to shoot a shotgun at me or no one's ever going to drop a four pound weight on my face at the same time. A four, it doesn't take a four pound weight to take your vision away. It takes a rock this big just being kicked up that could, you know, blind you forever. Yeah. It, it's, you know, so while the high speed impact or the high mass impact may seem like overkill, it's certainly going to be less than that that could actually take away your eyesight, especially as you talk about cycling and being on the road or any of those things, you know, mountain biking. I mean, let's put you down a trail where dirt's just being kicked up in your face and you're going to take your glasses off because there's yeah. no sun. It's like, let me just stick my face behind a wheel and have it, you know, throw stuff up at you. It's like, you know, really about eye protection. Yeah. Right. Well, an important message to end on then after yep. touching on shape, performance, style, and now actually protection. Yep. Um, let us know in the comments section down below which of these are your favorites and if in fact your favorites aren't in here uh, also please make sure you give it a big thumbs up thank brian uh, yep. it's been super cool talking to you thank you and uh, if you want to have a little look around foothill ranch oakley's headquarters then we've got another video on the channel already you can get through to that just there